So welcome to the second part of the podcast. Let's get straight into it and start looking at the more complicated structure of DNA. So here we are zooming in on the DNA molecule. And you can see that it looks like a double helix shape, like a twisted ladder. I think it's probably best if we start on looking at the sides of the ladder. And you can see that they're stripy, like purple and the light purple and dark purple stripes that have been highlighted there. They're the sugars and phosphates that actually alternate down the sides. Now we can see the bases. So we've got adenine, cytosine, guanine, thiamine. They're the four bases in DNA. And they basically complement one another. So you'll see always the yellow matching with the blue and the pink matching with the green. That's the same all the way through. And that's basically the C's matching with the G's or cytine and guanine. And the A's matching the T's, adenosine and thiamine. And that's the same always for DNA and that's what give it, gives it its code and you can see there it's separating like it might do if it's going to go through replication and again it's rejoining but it's always joining the same so it's sort of like two halves of one molecule that fit together sorry fit together and complement one another so again the C's always matching with the G's and the A's always matching with the T's. Now at level three we have to actually understand the structure of DNA in a little bit more detail than that so you'll see now that you've got a different diagram that's come up on your screen. To understand some of the processes like how DNA actually does replicate and also how DNA actually works, we need to understand this extra detail. So I'm going to talk you through a few points about the diagram that you're looking at right now. Now some of it's familiar straight away. You'll see A, T, C's and G's and you'll see also um, some shapes that maybe represent uh, what you might think are sugars and phosphates. So the A, T, C's and G's are obviously the bases and the pentagon shapes are the sugars and then the round shapes with the P's in are the phosphates. And you can see the A's match with the T's and the C's match with the G's. So if we look first of all at the sugars and the phosphates along the sides of the DNA molecule, we basically, we can see that that's bonded and that's actually bonded with really, really strong phosphodiester bonds. We don't really need to remember that what type of bonds they are or anything like that. We just need to remember that they're strong bonds and they're, they're held together pretty tightly. So the sugars and phosphates form quite a rigid backbone to the DNA. Now the A's and the T's and the C's and the G's, the adenosine, thymine, cytosine and guanine, are actually held by weaker bonds. And these bonds are hydrogen bonds. And here's a point you need to remember about this. Between G and C there are three hydrogen bonds that aren't obviously shown on this diagram. And between A and T there are only two. Now that's important because sometimes you have to label a diagram in a test. And the way I remember always, always remember this is there's two or three bonds between the bases and I always remember it's three between G and C and it rhymes like that so it sort of it can be helpful maybe. So three hydrogen bonds between G and C, two hydrogen bonds between A and T. Another thing I need to point out is the differences between the bases and the fact that the bases actually fit into two distinct categories and the categories we call them are purines and pyrimidines. Now it's not shown in the diagram, but purines are the bigger of the bases and pyrimidines are the smaller of the bases. Adenine and guanine are purines, so they're the bigger ones, and pyrimidines are the smaller ones, so they're thiamine and cytosin, or T and C. So I'm hoping by now we've got a bit of an idea as to the order of the way that things are structured, so we've got the bases in the middle held together by the hydrogen bonds, we've got the sugars and the phosphates on the outside, that are held quite strongly by the phosphodiester bonds and that the bases are actually attached to the sides of the ladder if you like at the sugars so the bases are attached to the sugars the bases are attached to each other rather than the bases attaching to the phosphates there's one more thing we need to look at and I'm going to see if you can pick up this yourself I want you to just look at the sugars on the diagram and see what you can tell is the difference between the sugars on the left hand side of the molecule and the sugars on the right hand side of the molecule Pause it for a second if you need to. Okay, well what you should have noticed is that on the left hand side of the, the diagram, on the molecule, you'll notice that the, the pentagons, if you like, are pointing upwards. And on the right hand side, they're actually pointing downwards. And this is true of DNA. It's what we actually say, to describe this, we actually say that DNA is an anti-parallel molecule. Which basically is meaning that one strand is sort of in one direction, and the other strand is in the opposite direction. This idea of direction makes sense when you look at the bottom of the diagram where you can see around the sugar 
molecule, you can actually see one, two, three, four, and five. The numbers one, two, three, and four, and five. And what they actually are there is they're representing the carbon atoms in the sugar. So this is a five carbon sugar. So for those that don't know anything about chemistry, all you need to know is it's sugar that contains five carbon atoms. Where the base attaches, that's at number one carbon atom. And then as we move around the sugar, we can see two, three, four, and five. Now along the left-hand side, side of the diagram, you'll see that as we move up, we're going towards the five sugar, or the, sorry, the five carbon atom, the number five carbon atom. Whereas on the right-hand side of the diagram, as you go up, you can see you're actually going towards the direction of the number three. So there's a three end at the top of the right-hand side and a five end at the top of the left. This difference between one side and the other becomes really important when we get to DNA replication. But right now, all you need to know is that there is a difference between one side and the other, and it's based around the position of those carbon atoms. Now, you might need to replay that stuff backwards again, because to prepare properly for the test, you do actually need to memorize this diagram and know, for example, which are the bigger bases, which are the purines, and which are the pyrimidines. What are the numbers? How can you number the carbon atoms on the sugar? The number of hydrogen bonds between the different bases. And you need to be able to explain how we can actually talk about that anti-parallel nature of the molecule, that sort of direction sort of thing, in relation to those carbon atoms on the sugar. Okay, guys, so that's about it for this podcast. So that's the first section of this whole unit. Remembering that what we're talking about here is in the whole unit is how is DNA responsible for determining the traits that we have. And with that in mind, we need to know the structure of DNA so we can actually start thinking, okay, well, if we know what DNA is like and we know what DNA actually does, then we can start actually understanding that in a bit more detail. So have a good listen to this. You might need to listen to a couple of the bits of it twice. I've tried to keep it short and sweet, so I hope you notice we're under 15 minutes this time. And then when we get to class, we'll start to unpack these ideas in a little bit more detail and answer some of those questions you might have. Remember to put the questions on the wiki space as well, because that gives me a little bit of information before I get to class. So I know the sort of problems and that you have in understanding and the things that I need to focus on. Anyway, as always, keep it real, and I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao.